Ken Russell and I have words, and they're not pleasant. And we have a great relationship up to this point in time, and I can see him starting to emerge as the Ken Russell that I've been warned about. And I don't want to go that way with him. So I say, uh, okay, that's what we'll do. But I'm telling you right now, Ken, you're going to be the one who has the problem. Because look at the board. The next day we're in a textile place downtown Los Angeles where we have very restricted hours. And in order to get a full 12-hour day in there, we have to be in by 6 in the morning. So, so I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to have a proper night's sleep the night that you get this location that you want to have. And then I extended that with the crew. As I signed each person onto the crew, I explained to them that Ken was being Ken, and he wanted to drop down from the place he was staying in the Hollywood Hills and roll into work with a one-mile drive, and he's approving a location that has a huge sound problem. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we're going to have a terrible day. And, and I said, and, and actually, I'm not even going to stay with you guys that day. I'm going to leave and go home and get a proper night's sleep so that somebody can have a fresh mind the next day on set. But we know all this right now. And Ken is swearing up and down on the Bible that I'm wrong. Well, the day came in at 18 hours. And I wasn't wrong. And Ken gave me profuse apologies the next day when he showed up at the textile. Because as I said, I didn't stay for the rap on that. I didn't want to deal with all of that crap that he introduced by himself. And he said, you're a far better producer than I ever gave you credit for, young man. He said, why didn't you talk me out of this? And I look him in the eye and I said, Ken, can anybody talk you out of anything? He said, fair enough. 